Hey there, guys. Uh, I screwed up. Uh, there was a section of the analog video transmitter setup video about setting up the on-screen display that somehow did not get edited and then didn't. I did not notice that it was missing. So this video should have been in the previous video, and uh, here it is. Apologies. Next, we're going to get our goggles, or in my case, I'm not using goggles. I'm using this little display just because it makes it easier for me to make this video. And we're going to set those goggles to the channel that we set the video transmitter to, in this case, race band channel eight. Uh, exactly how you do that is going to depend on which goggles you've got, but you're going to need to put them on race band and then put them on channel eight. Uh, and then we're going to power up and we're going to see if we get video. That's weird. I have just a black screen. Whoa. I have a black screen. The reason I have a black screen is because I have a lens cap on the camera. Pull your lens cap off, everybody. <laughs> oh, yeah, there we go. We have video. Yay! The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the OSD tab and set up our on-screen display. The on-screen display is information that the flight controller can put in your goggles so that you can see while you're flying. The analogy I like to make is it's like when you're driving a car, you would want to have like a speedometer and a gas gauge so you know like if you're about to run out of gas or if you're speeding. The OSD gives you information like that. Now the default setting here is to have it set on auto where the flight controller tries to auto detect which signal is coming in. And sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. So I like to set it manually. Here's what I want to notice. Do you see that with it set to auto, we had more lines at the bottom of the screen? Right? We have the bigger screen, whereas if I set it to NTSC, the screen gets smaller. You can try that. You can go back and forth with PAL and NTSC. And do you see that when it was set to auto, it was in the big position, and I put this at the bottom of the screen, and now if we look at my screen, do you see that it's appearing at the bottom of the screen? No, you don't see that. You just see my finger pointing at nothing. Uh, and the reason for that is that the SkyZone monitor that I used to record DVR for this video, uh, it didn't record the bottom 10, 15% of the DVR. It just chopped it off. So throughout the whole rest of this video, there are going to be things at the bottom of my screen that I can see in real life that you don't see in the video. And again, I... I I should always use the HD Zero goggles to record DVR for videos because they are the best. They just work correctly. I should have used the HD Zero monitor, not the SkyZone monitor. Well, I didn't, and now we all pay the price, but mostly you. Good luck. The bottom line is this. If you turn on an OSD element, and then you move it to the very bottom of the screen in Betaflight Configurator, and instead of appearing at the bottom of the screen, it appears up here, or if you put it at the bottom of the screen in Betaflight Configurator and it simply doesn't appear on screen, but then if you move it up, suddenly there it is at the bottom of the screen. In other words, if there is a mismatch between the size of the screen that you see here in Betaflight and the size of the screen that you're seeing in your goggles, it means your PAL NTSC setting is wrong and you just need to swap it. And then hopefully things will line up. So what you're gonna do, because you've got the same camera I do, is you're gonna set it to PAL now that we've got that set correctly, we can actually set up our on-screen display. And the way this works is uh, we're just going to enable items by checking this one column here. And when we enable them, they'll appear on screen and then we'll drag them around. And we can put them wherever, they, wherever we want to put them. Let me set mine up how I like to set mine up. Here's how I like to set up my on-screen display. In the upper left, I've got the metrics that let me know if I'm about to fail safe my control link. Those include uh, RSSI DBM, link quality, and signal to noise ratio. And this isn't the place for a in-depth discussion of exactly how to interpret those. I'll put a link in the video description to a video with more about that uh, if you wanna check that out. In the lower right, I've got information about my battery, including the battery average cell voltage. And again, this is not the place for that conversation. Put a link in the video description to a video about that. Uh, I've got the number of amps that I'm pulling and the number of milliamp hours I've pulled out of the battery. Uh, in the lower right, I've got some miscellaneous things, including my flight time from the amount of time I've spent armed, which just lets me, gives me an idea of how long I'm flying on my battery, you know, so it's, to see if my battery's healthy and just so I have a sense of how long I'm going to be in the air. I've got my flight mode and I've got my throttle position. It's super helpful to know what your throttle position is if you're doing some kind of debugging or post-mortem of a crash or something like that. And then finally, I've got the warning element here in the center, which gives me warnings about like why I can fly copter can't arm or something like that. In fact, I think I'm going to knock that up slightly 
Yeah, I think that's good. And I like to push those all the way out to the edge because the standard definition display doesn't have a lot of resolution and it doesn't, they take up a lot of space. Some people prefer to move them in just a little bit from the corners uh, to make them a little easier to see. I might do, I might do that. Yeah, that looks good to me. I like that better. The other thing I would do if this quadcopter has GPS is I put the GPS stats in the upper right corner, but this one doesn't have GPS, so we're not gonna do that. And if you want your OSD to look just like mine, then I will give you a link to this paste bin where you can just copy this CLI uh, dump and paste it into the CLI to make yours look just like mine. It's in the, it's in the video description below.